Hey everyone, welcome to Everyday Champions Live. My name is Beck, and we are a global family online serving local people in the name of Jesus. And we are pleased that you have joined with us today, whether you're watching in one of our rooms, whether you're watching at home, or whether you're watching this back. We are thankful that you have chosen to be a part of today's broadcast. You're with us today and uh, we hope that you engage and enjoy uh, what is going on today. And it is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you men out there, those who are in our rooms or watching online at home. We are thankful for you, all our men in all of our communities, whether you're a, a natural father or whether you're a spiritual father, we want to say Thank you. If there's someone near you, a male near you, give them a high five or a fist bump. Men are not, not always up for hugs, so you know something manly. You know, punch a pinch. No, don't do any 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 harmful things. Um, but we want to say today that we honour you and we thank you, and we hope that today you are going to get spoiled in some way uh, to say thank you to you for all that you have done, all that you do for your families uh, and for the wider community. We honour you today. Well, we've got so much going on today in our broadcast. I would have to apologise for my very croaky and hoarse voice today. Any hay fever sufferers out there? I, this hay fever this year is, is uh, somewhat strong here in the UK. We've had a week of quite lovely weather, which is wonderful. I get caught in this kind of stuck between these two things. I love the summer, I love the sunshine, but it brings out the grass and the pollen, which my eyes and my nose are not very thankful for. So I get stuck in this, I love the summer, but I hate hay fever. Any hay fever sufferers out there, that is the reason for my hoarse voice. So you, apologies if you've got a bit of a croaky one this morning, um, but it is great to be with you. And we've got a broadcast coming up. First of all, we're gonna have a look at what happened last week. Last week we had commission and it was a phenomenal day and we've got a short highlight video that we're just going to show you in a few moments. It was great to be together and we had baptisms. So we wanted to share with you um, kind of a bit of a highlight of that day. Uh, so we're going to show that and after we've shown that we're going to go straight over to Erin and Gareth who are going to bring today's message. It's going to be great to hear from Erin um, as well. So uh, we're going to go over to that conversation. So make sure you've got your devices ready. Make sure you've got uh, your pens, notepads, whatever you want. Take some notes. These are great conversations that we've been having each week and uh, they're there to help you to grow as a disciple. And before we jump to the video, just to remind you that we do not have circles this week. Um, if you've been part of a circle, we're taking a short break. You should have received an email. If you haven't received an email, then you are possibly unsubscribed to the emails, in which case you need to get back in touch with us so that we can uh, resubscribe you so you can find out all the information. Uh, but there is a break of circles. We're back on the 29th of, or the week of the 27th, sorry, of June. Um, so have a few weeks, but feel free to meet up with your circle in the meantime. So we're going to go straight over to this highlight video. Let's see how well commission went last week and then we're straight in to the conversation. everyday champion and today I've decided to get baptized. I'm an everyday champion and I have decided to be baptized. I'm an everyday champion and today I've decided to be baptized. I am an everyday champion and today I've decided to get baptized. I am an everyday champion and I want to be baptized. I'm an everyday champion and today I've decided to get baptized.
Welcome to another conversation, but this conversation is different because I've got Erin with me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the conversation today. I'm looking forward to uh, talking a little bit more about our topic today. And of course, we're continuing on the theme of more. Oh. It's a subject that we don't get bored of. It's a subject that you've been brought up with as yes. my eldest daughter. Yeah, always heard it. Always uh always talking about it in every conversation <laughs> absolutely and there's always more to talk about yes. more <laughs> so erin recently you've been celebrating a special birthday yeah 21st birthday it was uh, a little while ago yeah how are you 21 i don't feel any different <laughs> it's crazy i'm only 31 it's impossible <laughs> <laughs> that would be strange <laughs> it would be but so you've you've obviously and i know received lots of great yeah. gifts i mean it's been a, a manic time in the household and uh, our recycling bin has been overflowing because of the the gifts that you've had what's what's been your favorite gift and now oh. i know you're not going to offend anybody yeah. but <laughs> like what's been your favorite gift uh, oh that's really hard because i know that a lot of people that are probably watching this have have got me a gift this year especially because it's my big one so it's really hard and what's really amazing though is that every single person's gift they you can tell they know me well because they've got me things that uh that I really love things that um I would pick out for myself but my favorite gift is really really difficult I think I mean this is a bit of a I don't really know if it's a you could call it a gift because I got it for myself but it was used with money that people gift me with but I got some really nice new shoes that I've been wanting for a while um so I think they would be my favorite gift probably because they were the most expensive but they came from the gift of money that people gave me so if you want to see those shoes uh I'll maybe wear them to church one day or or something and you'll see them <laughs> fantastic so people have really thought about a gift that they've given to you and it is true isn't it that giving something is about thought it is about kind of really adding value to someone and and there's something in us as human beings isn't there yeah. that loves to give gifts i mean i think my favorite gift to give is something that's technology oh i don't know a lot about that <laughs> well it's cause i think part of it is because once i've given it I also then end up continuing to help them. So it's a bit like the gift that keeps, keeps on giving, on giving. <laughs> especially to my mum, yeah. granny. <laughs> yeah, like I am I am the tech support hotline yeah. for my, my mum and my dad. And so uh, it's, uh, but it's great because again, it's about constantly adding value. Oh, what, yes. what about the favorite gift to give? for you so you've obviously like you said you've received some fantastic gifts yeah. every gift has been absolutely amazing, amazing. But, but giving gifts I know that is is that your love language is it one no. of your no I <laughs> thought it is, was mine is words words of affirmation that's my one but I do love giving gifts in fact I think I find more joy in giving gifts than actually receiving them so I think the question is what my favorite gift to give is and that's oh that's a hard one because again like for other people they do for me depending on the person I know what they like I know the kind of things they're into so then I give them what's based on that so for me recently because it was my birthday it was also my sister's birthday so I've given her a gift recently and me and her both share the love of reading so for her we often give each other the gift of, of new books to read and that's what I love giving her to her as a gift. And again, like you, it means that I get to read afterwards. So <laughs> it's good for both of us. But yeah, books, definitely a good one. Um, or I really like just get, getting things that are personalised as well. I like giving gifts that have a personalised touch. Has a gift ever gotten you into trouble? Because for me, Ooh. it has. Oh, no. I, I, and the problem was, and some of you may have heard this story, so apologies if you have, but I remember Leanne, mummy, uh, <laughs> asking about, you know, wanting or saying she wanted to get fit. And oh, so yeah. for, I think it was, I think it was for a Mother's Day when you were smaller. Um, yeah. And I think it was kind of a, a collective present. <laughs> I ended up buying her weights. <laughs> like dumbbells I remember that <laughs> from Mother's Day yeah let's just say that didn't go down well <laughs> yeah 
is that is it a hint or is it an actual gift? Uh, well, I I was only listening to what she was saying, and of course, I was thinking, great, because you know, if somebody gives you that little hint, yeah, but but they they're not they're not overtly saying it. You're thinking, great, fantastic, I've picked up on an insight there that I can go and get something, and then when they open it. It's it's going to be like oh my word that's exactly what I wanted but no it was uh, the the look that I got. Was <laughs> I mean I don't remember the look so there we go. Yeah no but l- put it this way yeah I ducked uh, <laughs> <laughs> flying dumbbells no no no, no. Oh, she nice. didn't throw them but yeah so here's it. We, we're going to ask an interaction question. Yes Erin. we're going to ask the same question to you so with whoever you're with. Uh, Maybe if you're in one of our rooms and you've got people around you, you can discuss this question. Or if you are online, feel free to put in the comments section um, your answer and there'll be people on there ready to talk to you. The question is, what uh, is your favourite gift to give? Have a little bit of fun with it and we'll come back to you shortly.
It is true that we are wired to give. Yeah. And I think anybody or everybody that's just discussed that or anybody that you talk to would agree with that old adage that it is better to give than it is to receive. And so it's interesting to kind of dig a little bit deeper and ask, well, why is that? And that's connected to our conversation today, isn't it, Erin? Mm. Yeah. Well, I was I was looking at, at some stories in the Bible that are about giving and uh, putting value on people, just as we've been talking about with the with gift giving. And I came across the story, and I really love this story because it really just shows um, this this person's um, the, the the value that they wanted to put on Jesus. And so we're going to read it together, and it is in uh, Luke seven verses 36 to 50 but we're just going to focus on the first three verses to start with and it's about uh, Jesus being anointed by the sinful woman so we're going to read it together and it says this when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table I love when Jesus reclines at the table it's like you always imagine him in a recliner lazy <laughs> boy with, a lazy boy <laughs> relaxing with the the people <laughs> A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When I was doing a little bit of research on this, I found that this story is also in the book of Mark in the Bible. And I found that that alabaster jar of perfume was worth about a year's wages for that woman. That is a lot of money. That that jar of perfume was worth a lot. And she Is that worth more than your trainers? I mean, definitely a lot more, (laughs) more than my trainers. So yeah, it was it was worth a lot of money. It was an expensive jar of perfume. But because Jesus was there and he he was in her presence, she wanted to show how much she valued Jesus. And she decided to pour the perfume on his feet. And that was a way of just showing honor and appreciation and value towards Jesus. And so I love that story because it really just encourages me and can encourage you as well uh, what what do we give Jesus? What is the kind of, what are the words that we speak to him? How do we talk to him? Do we praise him in the way that we know that he's worthy of praise? And also the fact that she had this perfume that was worth so much, she probably saved up that money and it was probably, you know, a lot to her. It meant a lot to her, but she chose to use that perfume to pour it over Jesus's feet anyway so she gave her absolute best to Jesus it's amazing isn't it that she took something of incredible value and that value a year's wages I mean again I don't know what a year's wages then would be but let's say in today's kind of average wage maybe would be 25,000 or something like that pounds that is in the in the UK you know, that that's an expensive that's an expensive jar of yeah, perfume it's expensive <laughs> but actually what i get from this is let's say it's 25000 pounds the value of that is unlocked mm. when it's given yeah it actually becomes worth more than 25000 in that moment to her yeah and of course to jesus when it's given, it's almost like the act of giving increases the value of what you've invested that Mm. money in. And I think she reveals to us a kingdom principle here, which of course is a principle that we can apply every day in our lives, which is whatever we've got in our hands, Mm. it increases in value as we give it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think that sometimes we can look at what we have and we maybe think, oh, we don't have a, we don't have enough. We don't have that twenty five thousand pounds to give or to, um, yeah, to give to Jesus. But actually, it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Whatever you have, however you can give, I think we can be really creative with our praise as well. Whatever it is, when we give that and we give it with the the right motives in our hearts, just like this woman did. 
then that's where the that praise is uh, really valuable. And Jesus sees our hearts and he sees um, where our giving comes from. And so I think the first point that we can kind of look at here that we've got is that praise isn't dependent on circumstances. So if you have £25,000 or not or whatever, if you have a lot to give, if you don't have a lot, it doesn't really matter. What matters is where it's coming from, what state of heart you've got when you give and when you give praise to Jesus. And of course, this conversation we're entitling more praise or the more is released through our praise. And I think what's really important here about that point you've just made about praise isn't dependent on circumstances is that the Bible reveals to us here that this was a woman who had lived a sinful life. Yeah. So, so she could have looked at her track record and seen that she's fallen short. I mean, when I look at my track record, and you can agree with, with this, but not too strongly, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've fallen short. I've missed the mark. You know, I've got a track record that uh, m- maybe trying and maybe, you know, attempting to be better, but... I will always seem to fall short of my own standards, never mind God's standards. And sometimes that can create this sense of of low self-worth. And when you're in that state, you don't feel like giving. Yeah. But like you said, she had a, a checkered past. She had a track record that others, and we know, uh, would point at and accuse her. But in this moment, her eyes were fixed on Jesus And that track record kind of just almost disappeared as she gave. I mean, I'd like my track record to disappear. Wouldn't you sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. And yet it it disappears as we praise. So Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, amazing that this woman really teaches us something about the power of praise and how it impacts our past and how it changes our present. Yeah, and I think for me also, it encourages me that even when we feel like you said about that low self-worth sometimes, even when we don't even feel like giving praise, when we don't feel like we're in the position to give praise, actually, just like this woman, she was a sinner. She had uh, this jar of perfume that cost so much, but even she might not have even felt like giving. We don't even know. We don't know if she would have felt like giving it, but she did it anyway because she knew who Jesus was. She knew that he was uh, worthy of her praise. And so she gave anyway, Mm. despite what she was feeling, despite her circumstances, despite her past, she gave and she gave um, everything that she could to him and honored him um, because of who he is. And I think it's important to say, isn't it, that when you give, despite how you feel, that's discipline. Yeah. That's the moment when you rule your feelings yeah. and your feelings may say i don't feel like praising god yeah or i don't feel like praising somebody else in terms of kind of encouraging them mm. and and giving them just it's words that are going to lift them and there are many times we don't feel like it but this woman demonstrates to us the power of disciplining our feelings and i think that's what praise does praise is a powerful means by which we can discipline our emotions and psalms Mm. is just one of the most powerful books in the bible Mm. it's in the old testament and psalms are are songs and they're songs that are very honest very raw and david as well as the other psalmist would often just explain how they've been feeling but you can almost see the journey of sometimes them going from despair Mm. but then as they're praising it unlocks something in them and then it starts to shift something in them i mean psalm 34 verse 1 is a classic i will extol the lord at all times his praise will always be on my lips and david is saying that at a time when his son Absalom had been completely subverting him and trying to undermine him and essentially to to bring him down from his position as king. I mean, that's a time when you don't feel like 
you know, give him praise. No, I mean, absolutely not. It, that, that would totally mess with you completely. Yeah. And yet in that moment, he disciplines himself and he shows that actually that's how you can start to shift something, which I think brings us on to the kind of next part of this story. Yeah, the next the next part we will... Um it is basically about bring, praise bringing a new perspective. That's the second point. Praise brings a new perspective. And so we want to ask the second interaction question to get this point started. And it is this. How can or has praise helped shift your perspective? Go and take a few moments to look at this question and we will be back. This is a really good interaction question, actually, that we that you've just looked at. Um, I think it's really important to look at perspective when it comes to praise, because often um, what we 
our perspective can determine what we do. But actually with Jesus and with praise, it's the other way around. When we praise first, then our perspective can be changed. And we actually see this happen in the next part of the uh, story in Luke 7. Um, And this is going from verses 39 to 43. And it says this. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. In this part of the story, we see the Pharisee who was um, with Jesus and saw this woman pour out the perfume on Jesus' feet. And to him, his perspective was that this was an offensive act because she was a sinner and he thought that this was strange that this was not right and he was pointing out something that that he thought was just completely out of the ordinary and shouldn't be happening but Jesus actually took this uh, what the Pharisee said and turned it into a teaching point for Simon and it just shows that with this woman, she actually had a completely different perspective from the Pharisee. Well, the Pharisee saw her as a, a, a sinful woman doing something that was wrong. Uh, this woman actually saw this moment as an opportunity to bring praise to Jesus. And from doing that, she gained a new perspective, knowing that Jesus was able to forgive her of her debt and that actually through him she would no longer have to be called or recognized as a sinner and so Jesus turned that into a teaching point for Simon um, and and just kind of explained that actually uh, it doesn't matter what your past is like but when you come to Jesus he can forgive you of all of your debts and that your past is actually completely forgiven. And I think what's powerful about the woman here is that she was not only giving a, a physical gift of this perfume and therefore unlocking its true value, but she was also taking something that maybe we don't associate as having value, and that was her pain. Mm. The pain of her past, the very thing that the enemy and the Pharisee in this instance in one sense was was being like the voice of the enemy would say that past disqualifies you that action that failure falling short so many times reduces your self-worth you're nothing Mm. you're rubbish you aren't fit for purpose the enemy will use all of that to accuse to rob to steal to kill and to destroy but actually The beautiful thing here was not only taking the valuable jar of perfume, but also bringing her praise from her pain. Yeah. Because what happens is our pain is is an opportunity for God to pour in. Mm. So as she was pouring out her praise, God poured grace into her pain. And of course, the bigger the pain... It's like a container. The bigger the container, the more that you can receive. So actually, as Jesus was saying, the person who is forgiven more experiences more. Mm. I mean, it completely turns upside down, you know, our track record. Now, of course, that doesn't give us permission to go and, you know, do whatever because we think, oh, well, do you know what? I'm going to mess up because God's going to pour more back in. No, that's not the motive. That's not the right approach. But actually isn't it amazing to think well even when i do fall short that is an opportunity for god to pour his grace Mm. into my pain but it comes when we praise that activates that exchange Mm. and that's what was happening here there was an exchange she didn't walk out of the house that day feeling 
like she had been shortchanged. Yeah. You know, oh, I haven't got my perfume anymore. You know, all that money that I've spent, what have I just done? Mm. I tell you what, she walked away feeling a hundred times richer in yeah. spirit and in her emotion and in how she saw herself. And like you said, with a fresh perspective. Yeah, and I think sometimes we can wait for the perfect, perfect moment to give praise to Jesus. But actually, this woman, she might not have had much. She might not have had anything, really, but all she had was this jar of perfume. But even uh, if she didn't feel like it, even if she didn't have the perfect situation to give praise to God, she did it anyway. And like you said, coming out of it, she was she was changed from the inside out and she knew that she'd been forgiven. She knew that there was God's grace in her now and she had a new perspective. And I think that gives us a new perspective as well, that actually we don't have to wait for the perfect moment to give praise to God, but we can do it at any point. And I heard something recently that, uh, that said that as long as you've got like hands to clap with, uh, feet to walk or words to say then you've got more than enough to give praise to God it doesn't have to be a a certain thing or in a certain place or a certain time as long as you've got one of those things or anything really um that that God has given you uh, as almost like an instrument to praise then that is something that you can use to praise God so she didn't wait for the perfect moment Jesus yes came to her house and it was an opportunity for her but we don't know what the rest of her life was like all we know is that she was a a sinner but she actually just took that opportunity and chose to praise Jesus and so from that I think we can learn that at any moment we are able to give praise and it doesn't matter um, what the circumstances are like but as long as we've got our voices our hands no matter what it is we can give praise at any point and actually it does us a good service because after that and through that God is able to pour grace into us and also our faith increases when we increase our praise well I'm going to remind you of that the next time I make you jump in the car and I am declaring out praise (laughs) in the car (laughs) Because there's often times when uh, we, I'm just driving and, <laughs> and again, we'll go on to talk about this now, you know, I might be feeling frustrated or I might be feeling fearful or anxious. And in that moment, I literally, and again, I've had to learn to do this and mm. it's not always, it doesn't feel natural, but literally kind of attack that feeling with praise. Yeah. And sometimes I will just literally go, thank you, Lord, yeah, yeah. in the car. In and the then car, and and we the, all jump. The kids are like, like and like, Woody's like, mm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Maybe if you've got kids and you're just driving them to school, why not just shout out, thank you, Jesus, and see what their reaction is. <laughs> yeah, but make sure that the driver knows if it's not yeah, you. Yeah, if it's Because <laughs> that could cause an accident, couldn't it? <laughs> we don't want to be held responsible for any accidents. <laughs> Definitely. But I think it is important, isn't it? isn't it? Yes. To recognize that that this isn't about an event every so often. Mm. Like we have to make this a habit. Yeah. And this goes to the third point. Yes. So the third point is let's make praise a priority. Make praise your priority. And we're going to start this point off again with another interaction question. And the question is quite practical. So Think practically, think about maybe making this a goal for yourself this week. How can we make praise a habit?
So you may have come up with some ideas in sharing so far. If not, don't worry, we will help with that because I think it is so important that this is practical, that this becomes a habit, it becomes a discipline. Mm, yeah. And we're going to look now in the story to see why this is so important and how we can make it a priority. Yeah, so the last little part of this story in Luke uh, from verse 44 right to verse 50 uh, says this it says then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon do you see this woman I came into your house you did not give me any water for my feet but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair you did not give me a kiss but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet you did not put oil on my head but she has poured perfume on my feet Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I love that little section where Jesus is talking to Simon and basically just says to him how this woman has poured out all she had to Jesus. It says that, that she didn't stop kissing his feet, that she poured her perfume over his feet, not just anointing his head with oil. She went to her very, very best. She didn't do the bare minimum, but she gave all she had to Jesus. She made praise her priority that day. And I think that there were so many different things that she could have done when Jesus was at the house. She could have done so many other things. She could have tried to um, make the house look nice. She could have tried to um, pay attention to other things. But actually, she brought her attention straight to Jesus. And she immediately knew in his presence that it was her um privilege and honor to give him praise um, and she decided to do that over everything else that she could have been doing instead so we see in this last little part of the story that she made praise her absolute priority and also the fact that she knew that Jesus uh, had forgiven her sins and who Jesus is to her she knew that she knew that he was her savior and was so valuable to her and out of that she decided to give all of her praise she decided to make praise her priority and I think this teaches us that when we know who Jesus is to us when you know who Jesus is to you and what he has done for you and all the things that he has uh, worked for for you in your past as you look back on your life you see the faithfulness of God and you also see that he can do that again when you know who Jesus is to you then you want to give him praise I know that when I read the Bible when I look back over my life when I spend time in the presence of God I 
can't help but want to give praise because there's something inside me that stirs and and my spirit just knows who Jesus is and out of that I just want to give everything that I've got to him and so I think rather than waiting for that feeling of um oh I feel like praising in this moment actually make it a priority to go go into God's presence to think about the things that Jesus has done for you um, the fact that Jesus even died on the cross for us, that is the biggest thing that he has done for us. So thinking about those things and just starting to thank Jesus for those things, it then starts to overflow into more and more praise. And I think we see that from this story of the woman, even though she entered that room as a sinner, she came out a new person with a new perspective because she made praise her priority. And I think she actively demonstrates to us what Jesus talked about in Matthew 6, 33, when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added to you as well. Mm. And she sought Jesus first. She prioritized him. And as we've already talked about, when you prioritize him, it shifts your perspective. It actually gives you a whole new uh, take on your circumstances your circumstances may not change immediately no. they may be exactly as they were but how you see them is completely different because we're called to live by faith and not by sight mm. and praise as jesus said in verse 50 unlocks faith it unlocks uh, the very atmosphere that we need to live in it's a bit like you know in our physical selves we need oxygen yeah You know, we can't just go to the moon without any kind of breathing apparatus for oxygen because the atmosphere doesn't support life on the moon. Mm. Uh, Yet on Earth, we have an atmosphere that allows us to survive. In the kingdom of God, we need the atmosphere of faith. And, And faith comes when we praise God. And I think some very practical things here, as Erin has already mentioned, is uh, is first of all you know how do i make it a habit we'll start by declaring at the start of the day who god is to you Mm. who is jesus to you like make that the starting point because there that you you're just on that point alone you'll always have something to praise him for when you declare who he is and then and then why does he deserve our praise and as Erin has said well when you look back on however long you've been on this journey or when you look back over your track record as I will on mine I can just see so many times when he has been faithful Mm, he's always been faithful but I can see some specific examples I can see times when when I messed up and yet he was there and very present and and then and then start to look at how you uh, uh, want that praise to unlock something in the present mm. because it's not about just praising in the past. It's about, okay, praise unlocks God's involvement in the now. Yeah. So right now your circumstances may be dire. They may say this isn't something to praise about, yeah. but actually praise unlocks faith, which gives you a whole new perspective. But I believe also it starts to shape those circumstances And then praise, through our praise, we can start to um, prophetically speak about what it is that we're expecting. And again, this is part of this story. Her act was a prophetic act. Mm. The actual uh, perfume that she was using was the kind of perfume that, and in one of the other records in the the Gospels, it was used to prepare bodies for burial. Mm. And of course, Jesus had not yet died. And so her praise was prophetic. Yeah. Her praise was speaking into the future. It was actually shaping the future that would affect all of us. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so your praise isn't just about you. Your praise is prophetic for your family. When I praise, it affects Erin because mm. she is my daughter and she's part of our family. And so my praise is prophetic. To be prophetic is to to speak forth Mm. words that have authority to shape the future. And so praise is so powerful. Why wouldn't we want to make it a a habit? And I think like practically speaking, Erin, you know, declaring out loud actually audibly is so powerful, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I think sometimes we can 
forget how powerful our words are. And there are so many different instances in the Bible um, where uh, we're told actually that there is life and death in our tongues. Mm-hmm. And James. Yeah. yeah, and we get the opportunity and the choice to decide what comes out of our mouths. And so I think sometimes we take that so lightly, but actually when you think about it, speaking life can come from praise. When we praise, that is speaking life. And there is so much power in that. And I think we can easily forget that because words can be such a throwaway thing, especially these days. There are so many words that are spoken. And for me personally, I can easily just say words and not mean anything. So now it's become more of a priority for me to watch what I say, because what I say makes an impact around me and within me as well. And through praise, through our songs, through our words, um, through what, what we say to Jesus, our prayers, all of these things can either build up our faith or it can diminish our faith. And so it's really important to decide every single day, like with declaration, deciding uh, to choose each morning to wake up and say the things that you know are true. Um, And also the importance of memorizing Bible verses. I think as we've all got older and left uh, kids church or grown up and your parents are not teaching you things anymore like you're not a child anymore it's actually harder for for us to get into the habit of remembering bible verses and to get them into our heads and into our hearts so that we are able to proclaim them out loud because it's a powerful thing so when we speak those things um actually it it is just it's a powerful thing that increases our faith but also Mm. changes the atmosphere around us and so i think it's if, if you in that interaction question didn't really know what kind of habit you want to start making in terms of praising maybe that's something for you each morning get up and and choose to to speak bible verses out loud or or write down some things that you know are true about you about jesus living in you um, and just watch over time how your faith can increase just by Mm. speaking those things out loud yeah that's that's really good and again another practical tool On Winning Life TV, uh, I've been doing daily motivations Mm, on every uh, weekday. And again, what we've been doing is looking at declarations of who I am in Christ. Again, it's just another tool that you might find helpful just to, as a a catalyst, as a stimulus to to get you uh, speaking out loud, this is who I am in Christ. And again, that praise of him unlocks that that fresh perspective Mm. on our circumstances and it starts to speak into a future that there is so much more that God wants to do in and through you and praise unlocks that more. So we are going to pray right now and we are going to ask God to help us to develop a habit of praise Mm that we start to release the more through our praise. So Erin, I'm going to ask you, will you pray for us? Yes, absolutely. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that you are always with us and that we're never alone. And we thank you that with what we've been given in our lives, even the fact that we know that you've died for us, Jesus, there is so much to praise you for, even just the fact that you are our saviour, that you are our friend, that you're always watching over us, that you are guiding us through this life. There is so much to thank you for, so much to praise you for, and we don't want to ever become over familiar with who you are. And so in this moment, God, we just ask that you will help us to uh, open our hearts, open our eyes to more of who you are so that every single day, even when we don't feel like it, even when we think that the circumstances around us are swallowing us up, Lord, we just ask that you will give us strength and that you will give us the, uh, the, the resilience to keep on going and to praise you through every single season of our lives. And help us with these habits that we have uh, come up with, these maybe these new goals that we've decided to uh, to start. We ask that you will help us to uh, get on board with them and to follow them and to see you work through them as well, Lord. We pray that you will help us to see more of who you are as we praise you. Shift our perspective as well. 
We pray that you will help us to remember that there is more faith that comes from more praise and that you are always working and that even when we can't see you working, uh, we can praise you and thank you in advance for what you are doing for us and have faith that you have got the best for us. So this week, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whoever we are with, God, I pray that you will shine through us, that people will see you through us and help us to give you all of the praise and honour through it all. Um, and we just ask that you will help us to be a light to others around us so that they see more of who you are in this world. Amen. 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 Thank you, Erin and Gareth. What an amazing conversation that was. It's great to learn and grow together as disciples of Jesus and to take on those points um, about praise. It's great to, to learn and to grow, to make sure that we are praising, praising God. He is worth praising. And uh, we're gonna carry on with our worship today and we're going to take communion together so if you're watching at home and you haven't got your bread or your juice ready this is your opportunity to go and grab it so quickly so that we can take communion together and I just have a verse that I want to bring to us today as we uh, come to this time of worship and it is from Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 20 it reads this this is Paul writing to the Galatian church and he says I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What a really powerful verse, where Paul says that I have been crucified with Christ. When Christ died on that cross, he crucified our old identity. He had crucified the sin and the shame that we have would have would have done are doing and will do he crucified all sin and uh, that means our old flesh our old life was crucified and he says and i no longer live but christ lives in me that is such a powerful statement when we think about it that when we wake up in the morning and we live the life that god has given us it is no longer us who live, the old us, but it's Christ who lives through us. And that really can change the perspective of how we live our daily life. When we live our life through the, through the lens of what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us and the identity that we now carry. And then he says, though I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus gave himself for you. You may be sitting there thinking, I am not worthy of someone to do that, to give their life up for me. None of us deserved for us to have it, to receive that from Jesus. But he loved you so much. God loved his creation. He loved you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you so that you could be back in relationship with God and that you could live a life where your old life is gone, the NPC, the old version of you can be gone and you can now live as this person with Christ in them. Every day waking up, the MVP, going into the world and being a light. But he did, we have that opportunity because Jesus gave himself for us. And that is why we take the bread and the juice today. It's just a symbol to say, Jesus, your body was broken, just as we break the bread and your blood was shed and as we drink the cup. It's just bread and juice, 
but it signifies and symbolizes so much more. And we take it to remember what Jesus has done. So I'm going to pray. And as we pray, let's take the communion together. Lord God, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you for your sacrifice that you gave your one and only son for us. But Lord Jesus, you didn't give your life for, for, for us in vain, Lord God. We just thank you that you gave your life so that we could be connected back to the Father. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you gave your life and that our old identity, the old us, is gone and we can now live our lives through you. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your body that was broken and your blood that was shed. We thank you for all that you have done for us, for all you are to us. We give you praise. We give you thanks. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you for those people who have given into the offering today, who've brought their tithes, who've brought, brought sacrificially today, and out of obedience to you, have followed what you have asked for us to give that tenth, the tithe to the storehouse, and that you will bring abundance in our lives. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for all those who have given today, and we pray that you'll put a multiplying effect on that money so that we can impact this world for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We honour your name today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you want to give today as part of your worship, you can head over to our website, everydaychampions.tv slash give, where you can give regularly, um, or you can give a one-off, or you can give to um, a fund, maybe you want to continue to give into the expansive offering, our annual offering. You can do that also over at the website. We're just so thankful that you joined with us today. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. Don't forget there's no circles this week. We're back on the week beginning the 27th of June. And we've got so much coming up into the summer. It's going to be great. So make sure you stay continued to be uh, engaged and, and plugged in. And uh, remember today and every day, you are a champion and there is more in you than you think.